Oh, you know it's a good sign when Jimi Hendrix is leading me in. Thanks a lot, guys. We're at the Beatty Biodiversity Museum here at UBC. Get a load of this. They've got over two million exhibits and the skeleton of a blue whale, the largest creature ever to roam the planet in the seas, mind you. And we're going from the largest creatures in the world to the smallest. Now, we're going to be at the Beatty uh, Biodiversity Museum all day. It's Vancouver's Natural History Museum. I'm with Derek. Now, Derek, there's a very cool sort of art project uh, with a bunch of these portraits, but there's a bit of a twist because these are actually microbes. Absolutely. Invisible Portraits is the newest exhibit that yes. we're running here at the Beatty Museum. And all of the creatures that are displayed here could fit on the tip of a pin. Now this is amazing because usually when uh, customers or the general public or people seeking this kind of education, they will never get to see what microbes look like unless they're in some kind of lab setting or there's a big electron microscope or something like that, right? I love the ability to raise awareness about these unusual structures. There's so much amazing life on this earth that you just can't see with the naked eye. And this project, this invisible portrait, sort of gives you an idea of what these things look like at a microscopic level but blown up so it, it just gives you an idea of some of the texture and it is amazing to think that such complex structures like this exist in such minuscule detail. If you can believe it, Thor, all of the things that you're looking at right now are uh, individual organisms that yeah. are found inside termite stomachs. Amazing! And we don't want to call these animals, right? They, they're, they're considered creatures because there's a certain set of criteria that makes things animals that they don't fall under, right? That's correct. The word protist has been used to describe all kinds of things that are not quite animals and not quite plants. Yeah. Uh, many of them, like the one rendered here in this metal sculpture, have really unusual shapes unlike anything from either kingdom. Incredible! Sometimes truth is, truth is stranger than fiction. Thanks a lot, Derek. We're here all uh, morning at the BD Biodiversity Museum. I'm getting my nerd on. This is incredible, you guys. They've got over two million specimens, and we'll check out that blue whale skeleton later. Amazing stuff here. Good morning, kids. I'm here at UBC at the BD Biodiversity Museum. It's Vancouver's Natural History Museum. Coming up, we are going to be learning about the signature piece here, the 25-meter-long blue whale skeleton. We'll learn all about that and where it came from coming up here at the Beatty Biodiversity Museum. Young man, gonna make a stand, you big, steal your ball. This is amazing, you guys. I'm very excited to be here. It's UBC's Biodiversity Museum. It's the BD Biodiversity Museum. Derek, if people want to come in here and just sort of walk around by themselves or get a guided tour, you have both options, right? Absolutely. And what are the hours for the museum? The museum is open from 10 till 5 most days. Um, on Mondays, we tend to close up in the fall, however. Uh, that said, um, even when wandering by the UBC campus, you can still get a glimpse at the incredible blue whale skeleton that we see just to my right. Yes, and incredible is almost an understatement in this situation. This thing is uh, just over 20 25 meters long. Uh, this is amazing. One of the largest creatures to ever roam the earth, although, you know, roaming the seas, they're still alive today. Are they still considered endangered now? Unfortunately, yes. They are. Blue whales are still recovering from the damage that was done to their population by whaling. Right. Unfortunately for this individual, uh, she was likely killed by a ship strike, something that still does happen to these amazing animals. And where and when did this uh, carcass actually wash up? Uh, this individual washed up in 1987 on Prince Edward Island, so she's had to travel quite a ways to get here to the University of British Columbia. Amazing. And a lot of people um, sort of don't realize that uh, the larger whales, they don't have teeth, they have baleen, so it's essentially a filtration system that lets them eat tons and tons of krill, tiny shrimp every day, right? That's correct, Thor. And the, the jaw here, as you can see, the lower part, you were saying the lower jawbone could actually drop down practically to the floor here at the museum. It makes just about a 90 degree angle. It's incredible. Uh, the two lower jaws of this blue whale yeah. are the largest single bones in any animal, past or present. That's amazing. And they're not actually connected in the anatomy of the whale, are they? That's true. In between those two jaws, a small organ was recently discovered just in the past 14 months. Fascinating stuff. Thanks a lot, Derek. We're here at the Beatty uh, Biodiversity Museum all morning long, getting a load of the uh, whale, and they have over 2 million specimens here to tell you about. It's just incredible stuff. I don't think I'm coming back to work. You are in full-on nerd-out mode. Right on, people. We're at the Beatty Biodiversity Museum, and we're in the research area right now. We're going to be learning about some of the amazing and fascinating things they do here in terms of biodiversity research. All that and more coming up, plus a sample of the third largest collection of fish in Canada. Canada. All that and more coming up. We're at UBC. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys. 
We're here at the BD Biodiversity Museum. This is the Discovery Lab. And Derek, uh, t part of what happens here is also a, a, a tremendous amount of research. So speak to me about what d biodiversity actually means. Well, biodiversity is about the diversity of all forms of life on this planet. And doing research with different organisms is something that we really want to put the spotlight on. Right. Right now, we're spotlighting two amazing uh, researchers with the university, including Dr. Jedediah Brody, who is doing work in Borneo, looking at the incredible jungles there. Wow. Being a bird watcher myself, I want to get down to Borneo and check out the bird life. But this is something that you have to watch out for down there, right? Uh, indeed. Uh, the little guys in this bottle are leeches. Oh. And in Borneo, they are not just found in water, but on land as well. Uh, Jedediah uh, Brody has been kind enough to lend us some leech socks, devices worn over <laughs> the sock and pant, so that these little creatures don't crawl up on you and take a nibble while you're in the field. Okay, yes, it comes with its price when you're doing uh, research in uh, all corners of the globe. And then over here we have another uh, researcher that's profiled as well, right? Simon Donner is studying climate change and its effects on corals. Right. We're really interested in showing off some of the incredible equipment that's used when you're doing research. For example, how do you take notes underwater? How do you keep yourself from floating up to the surface when you want to study these creatures up close? Mm -hmm. And over here we have uh, one of my favorite sea creatures, the moray eel, and you were telling me it actually has an additional set of jaws sort of lodged in its throat. This is true. Moray eels have two sets of jaws that they can use to uh, twice bite their food. Looks like something out of a horror movie, but really, it's just part of coral reef ecosystems. <laughs> Love it, Derek. You're selling it well. Thanks very much. I'm learning so much. You guys here are at UBC at the Beatty Biodiversity Museum. It's fun stuff, I'm telling you. One more subject, uh, one more uh, hit coming up here at the Beatty Biodiversity Museum. Just wanted to share this with you. Sample of a couple of uh, shark teeth. Those are alive and well here in our waters in the world. The megalodon tooth, though, that was a giant shark that was extinct uh, years ago. And if you look down here, they actually grew to be 20 meters long, almost as big as the blue whale skeleton here. True monsters of the deep that once roamed the oceans. We're here at the Beatty Biodiversity Museum at UBC. One last segment to come up. We're looking at just a couple of the 500 research displays they have here. And you know what, you guys? Coming up, we're going to learn way more about this fascinating and humongous creature, the blue whale. Stick around. Yes, thank you very much, Kyle. Good morning. We've got one more segment of the Beatty Biodiversity Museum here at UBC. Derek, this has been fascinating. We have to come back to the blue whale and talk about it because it is the signature piece here. Uh, almost 26 meters long, this thing. It was excavated from Prince Edward Island back in 1987. A huge operation. There's actually a documentary that's about 45 minutes long that you can see about that process here at the museum. Absolutely. Okay. Now, let's. for people that aren't aware, really, of, of just how incredible these creatures are when it comes to diet and food and how they actually eat, uh, let's get into that. Because the, the blue whales are massive. They are among the biggest creatures that ever roam the Earth, practically. And yet, strangely, they eat some incredibly small prey items. Yes, they do. Blue whales consume little pink shrimp-like animals known as krill as their primary source of food. They catch these little animals using a strange structure known as baleen, which mm -hmm. hangs from the top of their jaws. And you were telling me during the break that they basically eat the equivalent in mass of, the, of an elephant in krill each day. Potentially, yes. It is incredible that these animals can consume so much weight just in little tiny shrimp-like creatures. That is astounding. And this is an example of the baleen on the blue whale, too. And there's a, there's a sort of cross-section of the mouth. Well, that's great stuff. And if people want to learn more about the Beatty Biodiversity Museum uh, at UBC here, what can they do? Well, check out our website, beattymuseum.ubc.ca. We have tons of information about the blue whale, other displays, and our opening hours. There you have it, people. I've had a great time here, and I will be back. I can guarantee that. We're learning all about the ins and outs of biodiversity, and I might be sticking around for a little longer here at the UBC Biodiversity Museum. Yes, the skeleton is amazing, you guys.